Hey, hey, hey. Is it Eugene? Is that how you pronounce it? Mr. Papa or Popa? Eugene? Is it Papa or Popa? On EP, one P. Papa or Popa? Popa. <laughs> I get the first name, right? Eugene. Trevor, how would you pronounce his last name? One moment. Hey, hey. Yeah, maybe Popa. Popa? Eugene Popa. Eugene Popa? What up? What up? Bobby Smith in the house. What's poppin'? Hey, everything's good, man. What are the next? What are the next lyrics in that? All song? right, you should be able to hear me now, Mister Papa in the house. <laughs> Papa. Yeah, it's Papa. Yeah, Papa. Yeah, cool. Eugene Papa. Cool, cool. Good to meet you, man. Hi. How are you guys doing? Very good, very good. Um, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah, I was going through your program just uh, just before um, I was watching the videos in the uh, in the uh, in the school um, application website. I don't know what what to call it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I was even thinking that you know somehow school kind of replaces membership sites, uh, so you don't have to do them on your website anymore because you can have all of the courses and videos inside of school. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Very cool. Very cool. All in one. And then I think I think you you're doing a summit, right? When is your summit coming up? Yeah, I sent you a message. Uh, I hope you get a chance to check to take it to take a look at it. It's gonna be at the end of next month. Uh, I got some pretty cool speakers in there. I would say. Uh, and it'd be awesome if you would you know join us to do a presentation on memberships. You know, I think. Uh, like 80, 90% of my public is uh, therapists, coaches, psychotherapists. So what you're doing, I think, would fit like, you know, hand in glove with with uh, with that kind of uh, audience. Cool. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be fun. Yeah. So I did, I did a, I actually, I did a, I was part of a summit a few months ago for gym owners. And I did a presentation on nice. memberships, presentation on memberships for gym owners. And, uh, I realized, wow, there's so many similarities between a gym owner and a membership site owner because a gym is basically like a brick and mortar membership. So that's why they call yeah, it exactly. membership. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you got a very busy schedule. I won't, you know, capitalize on this in intervention today, but uh, when you get a chance, take a look at the message, send me a DM on school, and uh, cool. I'll send you more details if you need. Uh, I'll put in there the website so you can take a look and see who else is presenting. So, we can push that forward if you want to. Sounds good. Sounds good. End of June. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, I mean, the summit is going to be uh, going live then, but all of the sessions are pre-recorded. And oh. so we basically need about 65, 75 minutes uh, on Zoom, you and, I, you and I, and then you present on something. I'll ask you a few couple of questions and then we're done. That's all recorded. And then I'll edit that and play it when the summit goes live. So you don't have to actually be live when the summit goes live. I like being live though. Well, uh, we will we'll have um, the option to do a Q and a with some of the speak with some of the speakers post summit. So, you know, maybe we can work something out there. And also if you're interested, we could, you know, promote to the audience, some of the stuff that you're doing, um, you know, and uh, on affiliate basis, and uh, that way you can bring more people into your system as well. Cool. Yeah, I like I like summits. I've done a couple summits in the past. I created a training called How to Host a Summit. I think everyone in Contentpreneurs, you can all have your own summits. They're really fun. Yeah, yeah. I've done like ten or eleven so far, and so I got three more lined up for this year or four. So cool. that's you know. the cool thing about summits yeah. is like. You can be you can be like a nobody, 
right? Have no following, no audience at all. Create a summit. And yeah. All of a sudden, you have like an email list of like 10,000 people and you're the host of the summit and you're connected with yeah. big names. And so summits are really cool, especially like especially for beginners who want to build a name for themselves. They can just host a summit. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lot of work, I have to say. It is a, a lot, lot of work. work. It's like yeah. months of work with a team, but it pays off and uh, you have the content for life. You can repurpose it in so many ways mm -hmm. make books make podcasts make audio books make whatever you know so yeah. it's a it's a treasure trove but it's a lot of work and some you know most people will not do it because it's a lot of work and at some point you need some technical skills but once you do it a few times then you get the the drift and then you know how to do it so that's good totally. yeah the first time or you, you hire someone to do it for you <laughs> yeah you can hire someone to do it for you too but i think it's worth learning it's what you learn a lot from, from doing. Oh, it. yeah. But absolutely. Um, cool. Well, guys and gals um, and your puppies and cats, if you have them there, too. Happy to hop into some Q&A. You guys have questions. Then fire away. Post them in the chat or unmute. If you're going to unmute, just be concise. If you're going to put it in the chat. Make sure to add a question mark so I can understand what the question is. You'd be surprised how many times I've received a question with no question mark. And I'm like, I'm so confused. My brain can't process it. Like I need to find the question mark. Otherwise, I'm just reading a statement. So feel free to unmute or post in the chat. I'm here to help in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, Gene. All right. So um, you're doing memberships uh, and I like I have a couple of Facebook groups fairly. OK, one of them is pretty large, but kind of dead in the water. I haven't tended to it for quite a while. Then I have a second uh, Facebook group, which is for the international where I have all the summits going on. Um, Facebook kind of tried to implement some kind of gamification with their system to get people involved group chats and whatnot um when did you make the decision to switch from facebook groups to school uh, so that'll be one question and the second question there are a bunch of other softwares out there that are doing kind of similar thing to school like tribe those, those so i think it's called uh, they have some you know honey bee or something or uki or something so there are many many companies out there they are you know basically providing or offering the same thing as school does um and you know if you research the others and why did you choose school so those are the, the two questions i have cool yeah the I'll answer the second question first actually so why did i choose school i made a post on school about this actually let me try uh I'll, I'll find it later or you can search for it inside school and inside the school community. But basically what I did, the reason I started using school in the first place is because I wanted a membership, a paid membership. And so what I did is I just went on Google and typed best membership platforms. And I found like Circle and Kajabi and Podia and Thinkific and Teachable and a bunch of other ones. And I even went so far as to go into the second page of Google to find some stuff. And when I was on the second page of Google, it was like some completely like mysterious websites on there. Like, wow, I was like in the dark side of the web. Um, but I found all these different platforms and I tried them all and they all lacked what I wanted. They, they, they were, a lot of them were close, but they were either too much, like it was too cumbersome, too hard to figure out, too clunky, too ugly. They didn't have a certain feature I wanted. And so what I did is I just wrote down on a Google Doc. I was like, okay, here's exactly what I want. I want a form, like a, a feed. I want a place to do my Zoom calls. And I want a place to host courses. That's it. Like if I can just get those three things, I'm good. And so then by getting clear on what I wanted, I was able to manifest school. I'm like, wow, it has the feed right here in the community form. It has the classroom where I can put the courses and it has a calendar where I can put the Zoom calls, right? And then everything else is just a bonus. So that was cool. And then I found out that it was actually built by Sam. And Sam is like my, my mentor for the longest time. 
Like I watched all his videos for many, many years. And I was like, wow. So not only is it like just what I want, but it's built by Sam. So I started using it and I loved it. Um, and that's that's how I started using school. Now to answer your second question, uh, well, just let me conclude on that point. You have to find out what exactly do you actually want in a product and then just find out what, pro what platform has that. So if you're like me and you want a feed and you want a classroom and you want Zoom calls, maybe that's all you want, then perfect. School's what you need. All those other platforms, they don't compare. They might have similar things, but they don't have it as perfect as school has it. So that's the first, that's, sorry, that was your second question. Your first question is when did I switch or why did I switch from Facebook? Uh, I haven't actually like left Facebook. I still have it because we funnel people into, like I was going to close it, which is why I made this post. Closing this group soon moving in off Facebook. We got uh, like 288 people saying that they want to join the new platform. And then I made me realize, wow, if that many new people want to join the new platform, maybe we should just leave the Facebook group and keep funneling people into the Facebook because it's really not that hard. Like we're, like, well, we got um 18 people in the last week. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like a lot, but we can get this up to like 50 people. We're getting 50 people a week. That's like 200 people a month joining the Facebook. We can then maybe get, you know, 10, 20, 30% of those people over to the school group. It's just acts as like a funnel for my school group. So what I do now is I post in, in the Facebook group and I get people to join the school group. So this says, hey, I just filmed this thing. Do you want it? They say, yes. I'm like, cool. The link is inside school so i send them a link to the the, the group or the, the actual thing so if you you didn't you have a facebook group you could just use it as a funnel for your school group mm -hmm. you don't have to actually kill um, the group. yeah um so one major issue i've uh, encountered or heard more about than encountered myself was um, you know, platform, um, what do you call that? Not acquisition, but like, you know, user moving from Facebook, something they know and they're used to moving to a completely new thing um, and getting that on board and then logging in there instead of logging in Facebook. Uh, I forget there's like a term to this, you know, like a tool, getting used to the tool or getting acquainted with the tool. Um how 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 did you do with that? I mean, do you see like people dropping off because it's another website to log into versus yeah, doing the of same course, old course. Facebook thing? Of course. So I'm hosting a retreat this July. 99.9% .9 of the people who find out about the retreat and want to come won't come. Way too much friction. Way too much friction. They got to get the flight. They got to get the Uber. They got to take time off. It's just like most people cannot come. It's very inefficient in terms of like how easy it is for people to come. But that's by design. I only want five people there. And in the school group, it's the same thing. If you're going to be in the school group, that means that you went out of your way to be here. So these these prospects inside this, uh, not entrepreneurs, but these inside my free group, these 673 people, these are way higher quality prospects than my Facebook group because they went through that extra step, that layer of friction. They were willing to create and upload a profile picture on a brand new platform, right? All because they want to learn from me. So these people are very high quality. So I spend much more time nurturing these people than I would on Facebook. Facebook's full of like, it's, it's gar a lot of garbage in here. But this is like, wow, you've you've been sifted through, you know, and what remains is gold. Take a bunch of sand, sift, 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 just sift what you have left. You have gold. These people are like gold. And then even more gold is whoever upgrades from contentpreneurship.com to contentpreneurs. Now you've made it through another filter. Now you're actually paying, you know, 49 bucks a month. These people are like really gold. So most of our high ticket clients come from contentpreneurs. So I want that friction. I want those layers of hoops that they have to jump through. It's actually, it's a positive. Yeah.
Mr. Yeah. Smith, you. Um, I'm trying to find out how to get my uh like my client base, like try to find out who to help because when I promote what I my services, I get the people that I that I can help the least. You know what I'm saying? Like women, older, middle-aged women and stuff. Am I trying to help me and I who came from where I come from? Gotcha. Um, do you know, for example, Andrew Tate? Mm, no. Haven't heard of Andrew Tate? Uh-uh. Yeah, fascinating. I thought everyone would have heard of him. Okay. <laughs> do you know, um, I mean, go, go on YouTube, type in Andrew Tate and watch a few videos, just as an example, okay? And you'll see that this dude... You, you'll you'll find out his target market within 10 minutes of watching him. He doesn't even need to say who he helps. It's obvious who he helps within 10 minutes of watching him. Um, and so everyone that buys from him, he has like, I don't know, like tens of thousands of people in his membership paying 47 bucks a month. And it's all just this one niche. And the reason they're so attracted to him is because his content speaks to them. Yeah. So if you're getting like the wrong people coming to you, then your content isn't clear enough. Your content should, should make it very obvious who you help. Right. So if you're going to, if you're going to help say single guys find a girlfriend, then your content is going to be talking about what it's like to be single and what it's like to, to go on shitty dates with the wrong type of women, blah, 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 blah. You know, and you're going to be talking about what it's like to be a, a lazy man and how, you know, a, how to be strong as a man, how to be more attractive as a man. And then you're going to attract guys that want your help getting girls. You know what I mean? So your content should should do all the filtering for you. Get it. Get it. Like, like I, don't, I don't really consume any hardcore Christians on YouTube because I'm not a hardcore Christian. But hardcore Christians love consuming hardcore Christians. You know? Because every few sentences and every you know few paragraphs, they mention... Jesus Christ, and every time they hear that word, the the name, they're like, yes, like they it pumps them up, you know. So, uh, hardcore Christians attract hardcore Christians, and so you want your content to really speak to the people that you want to work with. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. I definitely get it. Yeah, yeah. So you said you're having these women come to you. You don't want to work with women. They just talk to men. I thought that's what I was doing, but <laughs> it's like, they're like, no matter what I say, it, like I get soccer moms trying to get help and stuff. Like, I can't help them type of people. I don't even, you know what I mean? I don't even engage with them type of people, but they're attracted to it. It's because you're handsome. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Thank you, Haley. Thanks, Haley. I appreciate it. But I, you know, my content all over the place. So I'll be trying to find out, you just get in where I fit in. So. I try to help the people who come to me just to help them the best way I can. But that's, I think my niche is to help people like who can overcome our alcoholism and obesity. That's why I really want to help because it's easier for me. So I've been trying to like conduct my content a little more towards that way. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get clear on your, your RMS, your refined marketing statement? It's like, uh -huh. I, I just started doing all that. Okay, just that'll help. If you can fill in the blank on the sentence, like I help who accomplish what, the clearer and more concise and more attractive you can make that statement, the better everything is. And then you can open up your videos and be like, yo, what's up? It's Bobby Smith and I help single dudes get find their soulmate on Tinder. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, there it is. And all the women are going to click off. They're not going to watch. <laughs> You're super clear on who you help and what you help them with. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mm. What I'd recommend for everyone too is come up with, this has been such a game changer for me when I did this. I wish I did this many years ago, but you come up with a list of 10 problems slash complaints that you keep hearing your niche talk about. What are the 10 problems slash 10 complaints that you hear them talk about? And then what are the 10 desires that you know that they all pretty much have? 
And just based off that list of those 20 things, you can make hundreds of videos because for each complaint, for each problem, for each desire they have, you could easily give like three, four, five tips, help them overcome it. It's a very, very simple way of breaking down your content. And not just your free content either, but this goes into your coursework as well. Goes into how to theme your your videos as well. Your your uh, your coaching calls. Haley. Oh, sorry. I'll I'll wait my turn. Sorry, Haley. That's all right. Thank you. <laughs> I would love everybody's feedback, and especially you, Ted. So I'm wanting to launch an app. And it's an iridology app. I don't know if you guys know what iridology is, but it's been around for forever. And it's becoming like a major fad, which I absolutely love because I want all humans to know what it is. And I'm the type of person that I would love to have a team for all of it. And I don't know what's best. So if I'm creating an app, should I tell all of my other successful iridologist friends to get them on board? Or should I have it just be me creating it with like the tech team and once it's created share it with the iridologists don't don't definitely don't do that last part that's the that's the, the thing everyone f's up on and does that's what i did i spent 20 grand on an app that never got launched because it's the exact exact same thing i spent twenty thousand dollars developing an app that never got launched because i did that exact thing that you just said at the end trying yeah. to build it in secret and then one day i'll launch one day i'll launch one day i'll launch it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> Because I told Tori, and she said, why are you telling me this should be your thing? I'm like, I can't. I don't think it's supposed to be my thing. You can't. Humans aren't designed to do things by themselves. So it can be your, it can be your, it can be, you know, you, you can spearhead it, but just let people know ASAP. Like I had this idea for the retreat yesterday. Today, I just wrote a post and said, or maybe it was even last night before I went to bed, I made a post. I think it was last night. I made a post about it. I was like, hey, I'm doing a retreat. You want to come DM me the word retreat? So you could be like, hey, I'm building an app for iridologists. If you want to help, or if you want version 1.0, send me a word with the word eyeball. Send me a DM with the word eyeball. Um, and you can get people talk, get, get in discussion about it ASAP. But, but uh, apps are very complicated. Oh, and really? you have to develop an iPhone app and an Android app. And you constantly have to update them because mm -hmm. the apps change and the phones change. Every year there's an iPhone 15, iPhone 16, and Google this, and Huawei that, right? Sony this. And you need like a you need a team that's ongoing gonna be developing that on, on an ongoing basis. Personally. I am much more of a fan of the set it and forget it type of business models where you build something and it just lasts for years. Yeah. Apps need like monthly support. Oh God, Tori's here. I'm supposed to be working. Don't let her see me. <laughs> That's okay. She's been here for a while. Um, so I would ask you like, what is, what is your ultimate goal with the app? You want people to download the app? Why? In my mind, I have a story that I can make money off of it, be another stream of income. And I feel like people love apps. Like I have a resistance to school because it's not an app. And for some reason, I feel that if there were just an app with all of this iridology information, not, it wouldn't be an app to put your eyes in and you get an analysis. You could just figure out how to book a session with like my team. Like you could choose, like I have this human design app that I would model it after. It would more just be like a resource hub versus a book, an ebook. So here's, 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 it's, it's a resource hub. Okay, so that's even more reason not to do an app. Oh, it would shoot. only make sense to do the app if it's going to be something that's like super functional as an app. Like you take a picture of your eye and it instantly gives you a report on your liver and kidney and you know all that stuff. Like that, you need an app for that. Well, you don't need an app, but it'd be very helpful to have an app for that, right? Like selfie, take a picture of your eye, boom, analyzes your eye. That'd be amazing. Yeah. 
But if it's just a resource guide or a bunch of information, then you definitely don't need an app. Um, I would only do an app in that sense if you're already making over 10 grand a month and you just want to have an app for the sake of having an app. But you sh like if you're not making 10K a month, if you haven't even proven that this will work with a simple funnel, then don't do an app. It's such a shiny object. Such a shiny object. And shiny objects are very attractive. And they can trick you. But they're like a mirage. Like, oh, there's water down there. Look, and I'm thirsty. That's all the way down there. And there's nothing down there once you get there. It's a mirage. And you can re-green the desert right under your feet. You start planting some seeds now. Totally. Yeah. So rather than going for the mirage, just re-green your, re your desert. Um. Yeah, I really, I really would encourage you to not go the app route just yet. It's cost so much money. How are you gonna, how you, like, how are you gonna afford the team to build an app? Well, thankfully, one of my dear iridologist friends, her boyfriend, is super tech savvy, so he could do it all. But it's still costs money. Ongoing money. Yeah. Ongoing money. School. Okay. School is worth. I won't even say how much. Let's just say tens of millions of dollars, this company, school. They wow. don't even have the app yet because they're proving it first with the website. Okay. They're making people demand the app. If you go on school now and you search the word app, it comes up like a hundred times because everybody wants the app. So now there's so much demand for the app. You need to create demand. App, 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 app. Look at this. One of those is me, yeah. <laughs> app, app. Okay. So they're, they're tens of millions of dollars and they don't even have an app. So you have to earn the right of passage to have an app, I think. Yeah. Okay, heard. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Let me just plug my laptop in one sec. Cool. Yeah. MVP is the name of the game. Minimal viable product. Create an MVP. Uh, you didn't. All right. So um, you have had your course and your videos on your own website. And since you've switched to school and you moved everything to school, or do you still have the old website? Do you need a web, uh, you know, like, a, do you still need a membership website or do you have everything with school right now? Yeah, everything's on school. But but before I was on school, you know what I did? I had a high ticket program. I'm trying to see if anyone here was in it. Um, Christy might have been in it at the time. We had a high ticket program, and inside there was a Facebook group for the community, and then the course mm -hmm. was delivered through a Google Doc. So we had a Google Doc. And then Google Doc was just full of these different links for each of the different modules and lessons. And each of those links went to a YouTube video. So it was very ghetto, but I didn't receive a single complaint. No one's like, why do I get a Google Doc? Nobody cared. They just like, oh, cool. It's a Google Doc with all these videos. Great. So once we got school, school's like the first time like our courses have looked like professional. But yeah, it doesn't need to be anywhere. Else. Yeah, I... I, I have two membership websites. That's why I'm asking. I have two membership websites, one in English, one in Romanian. Um, and uh, like I really customized it so I can actually even put like small ads inside of my membership <laughs> site. Um, so I'm like, like thinking of the benefit of actually moving out of that into school. Um, here's, here, here's, but... an ad. here's an ad what we do. Uh, if you go to contrapreneurship.com, you're in the classroom. If you go to this, for example, the ad is, hey, upgrade to contrapreneurs. Bam, like we put the ad right in there. Mm. So you can always put an ad in there. Uh, you, could also, yeah. you could also put the ad like at the end of each module, even if you want. Like in this, this, this is a free course, right? So at the end of every module, I could be like, okay, well, uh, if you want more support with this, feel free to upgrade to contrapreneurs. You know, I can put ads in every single video if I want. So you can definitely do advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Is it cool to just hop on? It's very cool. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My first time here. Okay. Uh, Ted, I was hoping you could maybe pick apart my my newness here. My RMS, I guess, is what it's actually called. My favorite thing to do. Really? Awesome. Feel but free only, to pick only, this apart. Only if you're going to let me roast you. Hey, I'm I'm roastable. All right, let's roast it. So, okay, so I'm switching gears. So I used to do the whole business thing, and now I'm switching more into the whole health and fitness thing. And so I have spent the last, like, three days on the road trying to figure out exactly who my people are, like, who my – I went through your peas and all that, right? And I'm thinking that what I am now doing is I am guiding burnt-out creative – professionals to get them super clear so that they can have more time and more energy and I don't know if that is specific enough let's write it out let's this is a this is a good exercise for everyone to do so as I was saying earlier you want this statement to be so clear and so attractive that it just like immediately is like, wow, it's solid. Like it's, it creates it's impetus. Tell you okay. on it. Yeah. Okay. So you wrote, by the way, the, the framework is I help niche. Thank you. Uh, accomplish, you know, dream outcome. Right. Okay. So yours, you just said, you already kind of messed it up in the way, but you tried to go off the tracks early. You're like, I guide already, like not the statement. So I help. I'll okay. Just, okay. I'll, I'll rein you in here. I help. And then, <laughs> what do you say? Burnt out professionals. Burnt out creative professionals. But it can, it doesn't have, they don't have to be creative. They just tend to be creative. So here's the thing with the RMS. Okay. Like I'll just write out mine. I help content Thank entrepreneurs you. make $10,000 a month. Okay. Boom. Okay, I'm complicating it. No, no. I say this, but they could also be podcasters. They could also be, they could they, they could identify as like uh, gurus. They could identify as teachers. They could, also, they, could, they could also make 100 grand a month or five grand a month. Like this is just a general snapshot of what I do. So okay. don't think that your RMS needs to be like, I help 16-year-old creative professionals who are once firefighters <laughs> do this thing and who want to blah, 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 right? Just it's a snapshot, generally speaking. So I help burnt out creative professionals. What? Uh, ultimately, what they're going to have is more time and more energy. They're, I help them create time and energy. That energy can either be created or destroyed. <laughs> Only transferred. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said something earlier, though. You said something um, like get clear so that they can, right? Yeah, well, a lot of them are like super distracted and unfocused. And they they don't know where to start, right? Like, so that's all. I've got all their pain points. I thought you said you... I thought you said you're switching from business to health and fitness. I know. See, so like, what is this? How is this? Health I've been going. Well, because what, how they're going to get there is through nutrition. So my four pillars and see, I'm so glad I'm talking to you about this because I did business for so many years that like, this is where I keep switching back to. And, but where I really want to focus now is on health. And so my four pillars are, uh, mental fitness, emotional fitness, physical fitness, and um, I wrote them down. Mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual fitness are the pillars okay. to get we, we to don't this. We to get into the pillars. We okay. don't get into the pillars of process right now. That's like down the menu. Um, okay. We just need to. We just need to be clear. We just need to make this feel good and sound good. Okay. And that, this can be like regardless of your pillars. Okay. So. I'll write mine down again, just for like a reference point. Okay. I help Thank you. contentpreneurs with what? Make 10K a month. Yeah. So 
here's the thing too, by the way, this is a statement I've arrived at after doing this for four years. Mm -hmm. And I've written this like 200, 300 times. I just had to whittle it down. It was so long before and it was like, it's too long. But 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 you have to start with something. So right now you're coming to me with a, uh, I used to do pottery, by the way. Have you done pottery? Yeah. Uh, do you like pottery? I love pottery. It's so cool, right? Because you take a clump of clay and it looks like nothing and you can turn it into like a statue of, you know. <laughs> yeah, or try to. <laughs> you create a bowl out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and then once you create a bowl, you can always make the bowl better and smoother and more silky and smooth, right? You can always make it better even once you create the bowl. So we want to at least take this like clump of clay here and turn it into something. Okay. So we just got to rework it and rework it and rework it. So you might say something like, um, I like to identify the niche as like a reflection of you. So I'm a contemporary. So it's really, I can say this with confidence, contemporary. Okay. So who are you? What label would you give yourself? Okay. So a part of what I'm creating around this is the rad human challenge. So I really actually help rad humans. Okay. Now here's another point. Your statements need to be able to hold up in a court of law. Okay. So when I say, when I go, if I was to be brought to court, someone's like, he said he helps contentpreneurs. And the guy's like, what's well, a contentpreneur? Well, it's clearly someone who's like an entrepreneur uses content. Right. You know? When you say rad human, how do you define a rad human? Yeah. So it's something I've created. So I need to scale it back and make it more understandable, like more like it needs to be uh, obvious. Stuff. Obvious. It needs to be right. obvious. Okay. Um, Just well, they're be, bold and yeah, they're bold. They're audacious. They're but, they're radiant human beings. They're uh, don't don't label them. Label yourself. Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm that. I I get out there. I do things. Um. I don't let things stop me. Okay. Um. If you were to stand in front of an audience of people. Yes. What audience of people would, would they all identify as? What label would they agree to put on themselves? That they're creators. Okay. That's so much clearer. Okay. Creators. Now you could even be more specific and say content creators, right? Are they content yeah. creators or no? Um. Not all of them, actually. Okay. They're well. I mean, they they create in different ways. Some of them are painters. Some of them are musicians. It, okay. So this is where, this is where it would help to put something here because there's so many different types of creators. But we're close. Okay. So I, I'd okay. hone in what type of creator. They're knowledge creators. They they take ideas from their head and they get them out there. But that all that's creators, really all creators do that. Yeah, that's what they do. So the, like some examples is like I said, digital creators or content creators or like hands-on creators maybe, or like um, musical creators or, um, or some other types of creators. Like, yeah, I mean, like I, I work, I, I work a lot with musicians actually, musicians and theater professionals, like uh, actors. I work a lot with actors. Saying musician is so much more specific than creators. Okay. Like if you just honed in on, on musicians. Yeah. And now part of you might be like, oh, but what about the actors? You know? So no, like, that's okay. Musicians are cool. Okay, sweet. <laughs> musicians. Now, 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 guess what? When I come across a musician, who am I going to send them to? Yeah. You okay. have, to, have to send them to you. No one else to send them to. Who else helped musicians? I don't know anyone. You know? Yeah. So you instantly become attractive by saying, okay. I help this niche. Same with me. When you come across a entrepreneur, who are you going to send them to? Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Of course you can send them. You have no one else to send them to. So, because no one's being that specific. And same with you. It's like, no one's being that specific to saying, I help rad people. Go, who do I send them? <laughs> who do I send yeah. them to help me rad people? I don't know. Yeah. Who send you. So here it's like, I can send you musicians. I know musicians. Okay. okay. So now... 
we want to say what they what's their dream outcome dream outcome not like something that they kind of want what's the musician's dream oh I, well i mean they want to they want to get their music everywhere man and they want to like really make a big impact in the world so for example we could say a rough draft here i help musicians get more streams on spotify right for example yeah there you go plain and simple if i'm a musician and i want more streams on spotify and i see this i'm like oh i'm gonna work with you yeah yeah now now to make it even more sexy we could say something like more using and then we say something so here i say like um okay using online communities right or yeah. whatever you, the, the using part though is like you can you can put whatever you want in there it almost mm -hmm. doesn't matter but using um what would you use to help them get more streams on spotify for example mm, well uh <laughs> ironically i would use social media which i'm totally new to uh but that's where i would recommend and then of course i'd probably send uh, them okay. yelena's way uh okay. Um, yeah tiktok yeah look, totally tiktok or pinterest look at that i have musicians using watching those properties in tiktok yeah that is so clear compared yeah. to hell burnt out creative professionals get clear so they can create more time and energy like that is a mouthful and i don't even know <laughs> yeah no so and, and the thing of the thing i don't like about saying burnt out is that you can go from being like all good to burnt out within like 12 hours and then be fresh again and motivated again with 12 hours later you know, like truly being burnt out is like a, you know, it's just a withdrawal symptom of caffeine. You know, like it's, it's a, sh it can, it's like it's like a cloud. It comes and goes. Mm -hmm. so you want it, like musicians does not change. They are always a musician. That's Streams right. on Spotify, that is so attractive, and then TikTok, they they probably already are on TikTok, so it's cool. Like, not saying you have to use this, but it's a very attractive statement. No, and that's beautiful. That's exactly what I needed. Thank you. Cool. You're Thank welcome. you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, chat. I'm looking in the chat. By the way, was that helpful for everyone to see that process? To see how I didn't allow Leia to be vague at all. Really helpful, cool. Kelly, what do you got for me? All right, have kind of a different question. So um, I got a restaurant, a local raw vegan restaurant to agree to let me come in and do monthly health talks. So I'm really excited. Um, yeah, kind of cool. So I'm gonna be talking about like, uh, my first one's gonna be about food combining but a lot of things that I'm going to talk about will be in my program. So I'm wondering kind of at the end of it, I'm going to, obviously I'm going to promote the next one. Um, I'm going to do a raffle, probably like a, a Dr. Morse's book or a book to get more emails, but do I promote my program? Do I promote like, Hey, go to my Instagram. Do I promote like coaching? Like what, how do I kind of, I don't want to be too salesy or, or okay. do I, I don't, what do I do? <laughs> okay. First off, let's talk about the raffle. The raffle was a great idea in the eighties and nineties. Cause that's like the trend back then. 2023 is where we're living right now, right? <laughs> a raffle is kind of outdated. You probably get way more interest, way more opt-ins, way more emails. If you said, you know, if you want my complete course for free, I'm giving your mini course or whatever you have to give away. For that's why creating a free, an attractive freebie is so important. You say, if you want this, put your email in as yours. And you make it super attractive. That way, if you do a raffle, you're only helping one person. Maybe two, maybe three. If you give us something away for free, you're helping everybody. And when you help people, they want to work with you more. So let's get rid of this raffle notion. <laughs> I just it's have books that I'm like, I have extra books for like that actually relate to the topic. So it's like my favorite food combining book. So I was like, it'd be kind of cool to raffle that off. And just be like, oh, here, just somebody can get it. One, once somebody opts into your community, then are you, are you have a school community or no? Um, I have a free Facebook that I'm slowly building, but I could start there, yeah. Okay. Well, 
in in your inside your community then you could be like hey i'm doing a giveaway and you just give it away in your facebook group okay so now at the end of my presentation though am i promoting my high ticket program am i promoting hey just connect with me on social media like what am don't i promoting that. that's no don't do the connecting with social media it's super super lame everybody does that also the other thing you guys don't want to do is inside your youtube videos I see big creators do this too, and they don't understand how it works, I guess. But you never want to say, um, I think at the end of your video, be like, okay, guys, so just um, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Like, it's such a useless thing to say because no one's going to be like, okay, she said comment, like, subscribe. So I'm going to comment, then I'm going to like, and then I'm going to subscribe. Like, it's useless. Um, and so with what you just said, Kelly, rather than saying, oh, connect to social media here, which is what everybody says, just put your social media on every single, are you using slides? Yeah, I'm going to do handouts because um, I'll probably okay. just like print out the presentation. Yeah. In your handout, just put the social media there, right? And then if they want to find you, they will. But you're going to connect with them by them opting in for your free thing. So you really want to pitch that free thing. And I would just pitch that because if yeah. you at the end pitch your high ticket thing or whatever it comes across it can come across as very salesy mm -hmm. but no one's ever going to accuse you of being salesy if you go up there you give an amazing talk and then at the end you're like by the way if you want my free course you can get it here to put your email like people love you right okay now when you're when you've got that freebie dialed in and people opt in for it you have a funnel set up yeah mm -hmm. i have a few <laughs> yeah so when when they opt in what happens next they get upsold right mm -hmm. boom once they opt in, you can, you know, send them a DM. Hey, you know, this or that question. And then boom, get them on a call. And then boom, yeah. done. Like it's, it's exactly the same strategy that you'd use if you weren't giving a live presentation. But the fact that you are giving live presentation is amazing. Yeah. Cool. That's sweet. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Have fun with that. That's going to be. I'm awesome. excited. And he has sugarcane juice too. He's getting a juicer. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> a, uh, a tip for going live in front of people is, have you done it before? Talk live in front of people? I mean, here and there, but this it's like a small restaurant. So I feel like it's not very intimidating for me. A lot of it's going to be tons of coworkers at the first time. So I mean, it'll be very easy. Oh. Um, I think it'll be okay, but I'm going to have someone record it for sure. I'm definitely recording these. Well, the tip is to get people to raise their hand in the same way I say type a one if if you found that helpful whatever well obviously really like because they type a one but you can really raise your hand if that was helpful or you know get them to do stuff okay basically. cool cool thank you yeah sure oh key dope key I'll be Boyd in the house Stuart in the house, all the way from NZ. Eugene, yeah. All right. You said something earlier when you were talking to uh, Leia, I think, and you said something very, very cool, like um, like defining your audience, like something related to yourself. I forget what it was, but it was very, very cool way you put it, like in a one sentence. Uh, it was an example you mentioned before you said, you know, like if you're just standing in, in, on a stage in front of a crowd, how they would identify the crowd, how they would identify themselves. But it was something that you mentioned there, like um, I forget. And I was trying to figure out maybe you can remember that. I have a recording of this. So if you want the exact word for word thing I said, you can watch the recording. All right. Okay. I didn't know there was a recording. But, so thank you. Yeah. Some, some prompts I give people to discover that niche is, you know, one thing I say is I say, how would you label yourself? Mm -hmm. One thing yeah, I, say, I think that's, some, yeah. How would you label yourself? And then another thing I always come back to is like, does, does that niche label, would that hold up in the court of law? Like, would a judge or a lawyer, would a jury, would they all, like, agree that that's what that thing means? 
which is why I didn't mm -hmm. like what you said I help rad humans because like what's a rad human? But if you say I help like house cleaners, okay, we all know what a house cleaner is, you know, or I help single mom. Mm -hmm. We all know what a single mom is. That's not up for debate. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these are some these are some you know very fundamental pieces that seem pretty obvious, but most. <laughs> I mean, you know, ninety-nine percent of people will make the same mistakes every single time. Um, yeah. So that's why, have you, Eugene, have you gone through my twenty-seven Ps? No, not yet. No, I just started. I mean, like, sign up with your program. I think a couple of weeks ago, I, I was, I was, I think I was watching Aaron Aaron Fletcher's uh, course, and then he, I think, mentioned you or something. I, I forget how I got there, but I, I somehow ended up, and I saw your. Uh, Last weekend you had a forty nine dollars something like free, uh, you know, three day something going on, and that's why I signed up basically through that. Um, but I haven't, you know, gone through your course yet, your program yet. So let me let me send you one Google Doc that will potentially uh, change everything for you. Like these twenty seven Ps in this document here. Uh, mm -hmm. Awesome. When, you're, when, you, when you're able to answer all of them confidently and clearly and, and, and they pass my stamp of approval, you are like on track for hitting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 K a month. No problem. It's just most people do not ever get clear on them. They do not ever feel confident about them and they never get my stamp of approval. So it's like all, any, if you guys are not making 10 K, awesome. it's because you're not clear on these P's. You haven't written them out. I know Karen, She's hit several 10K months and she's clear on these Ps. I've given the stamp of approval on all her Ps. Anyone else who's hitting 10K a month, I've given a stamp of approval on, they're clear on these Ps. So it's like, if you're wondering like what to do, where to start, those Ps right there. So key. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Adina and Haley making me feel stagnant right now. Damn. I got a question, Ted. I can pretend to walk. Snare, what's up? Oh, he's frozen. Froze up. Froze up. Haley, I just did my 20 squats right before this call. No, you're completely frozen, but happy to take someone else while he unfreezes. Are you back? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So um, basically, I'm really ready to make these high ticket sales, right? Um, and I'm doing everything, you know, doing the DMs. I'm doing the content DM to sales, um, sales flow. And um, it seems to be working well. I'm not getting as many discovery calls as I thought I would, you know, with the, you know, adding 40 friends and, um, you know, adding a bunch of people to my Facebook group and, you know, keeping up with the content there. So I'm just wondering, do you have any suggestions on, I guess, what to focus on or what I can do to speed up the process to get people on the calls? Yeah. So I feel like once I get them on the calls, then yeah, I take it from there. 100%. Yeah. Once, if you guys are able to get calls, the hardest part's over. And I'll use an analogy here that I don't know how appropriate this is, but I don't care because it's accurate. Uh, if you're trying to, let's say, I'll speak to the guys out there because women, maybe you don't look at it like this, but um, if a guy is trying to get with a girl and he can get that girl, get that lady, get that woman to come back to his house, it's almost guaranteed to be game over. Like he's he's got it in the bag. Right. And that's like kind of like getting someone on the call. Like you have a very high chance of success if you just get someone on the call. Right. So rather than like thinking like, okay, how do I like master the phone call? You could master the phone call, sure, and that would help you. But just getting people to the call is the hard part. Yeah. And so the DMs are critical for getting people on the call. Absolutely. But even that DM convo, like let's say you're texting a girl, why would that text convo lead to her coming over? Probably because she had a really good experience with you in real life prior. Maybe she met you at a party or she met you at the street, whatever, right? So that first interaction she had with you had to have been very good. 
So think, what's the first interaction someone had with me before I'm even DMing them? It's probably they watched a video of you, dude. In fact, like 100% of the people who sign up for our programs have already watched one video of mine, at least one. And it made such a good impression on them that we had a good DM conversation, had a great phone call, and they signed up. So the place for you to start, the reason I called this program Contentpreneurs is because it starts with the content. It was content, conversations, clients. Content, conversations, clients. What does it start with? Content. Content. Wondering, where do I start? How do I, how do I increase the likelihood of getting these clients? It's making good content. And good content doesn't mean high production value, uh, but it does mean need good audio. So you might want to upgrade that audio Back. more time. Because I wouldn't, I, hear you. I wouldn't want to watch a video uh, with your current audio quality. I literally, during this call, I just got a, a package um, that has my, my new earphones, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, soon to come. Well, yeah, I mean, you might be able to set it up before the end of the call and test it out but before we end the Zoom call, dude. Yeah. Test it out. Pop it right open, man. Pop it right open. Cool. All right, well, we'll see it before and we'll listen to it before and after within the next 15, 20 minutes. How about that? Yeah, sounds good. I also have another question. Um, so I, I I went through the quick start um, thing in contentpreneurs and, you know, I was working with a few beta clients and they kind of fell off. You know, I followed up with them, but I don't know if they just weren't motivated because they weren't paying for it or whatever happened. Um, and, you know, I followed up a few times and never heard back. So I don't have testimonials yet. I'm like, I'm very confident. Like I am, I can definitely help people get results, but do you suggest that I, you know, get some beta clients or just continue with the current flow of getting people on calls and just try to sell them without the testimonial? You don't need testimonials. Okay. You don't need testimonials. I didn't have testimonials for the longest time. Now that I have them, I like them, but I never had them for the longest time. The purpose of getting a beta client is not to get a testimonial. Sure, that'd be like the ideal end outcome. That'd be like, um, you know, the ideal end outcome, dude, is you 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 go on a date with this girl, you fall in love, you get married, you have a bunch of kids, you live happily ever after. Ideally, right? But it doesn't need to happen for you to have, you know, a nice time with someone, right? So you can create an amazing relationship with a, a, a beta client and they don't need to give you a testimonial. But what it'll do is it'll give you confidence when you talk to someone on the phone, like, oh yeah, I've worked with such and such person and they had that same issue and helped them overcome it, right? So if you're beta client, let's say at acne and you help them clear it up a bit, never got a testimonial. It's okay, because next time you talk to someone, you're like, oh yeah, I just had a client, she had acne, we helped her clear it. Like it gives you confidence and it over helps you overcome imposter syndrome. That's the whole goal of getting the beta client, by the way, is to help you overcome imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because 100% of you are imposters if you don't have any experience. So I'm trying to kill that imposter syndrome by giving you the experience. Or getting you to give yourself the experience. Yeah. So, yeah, they don't need to say like, oh, Nur is amazing. But you need to know that you're amazing and you're going to know that when you work with some people. Right. That makes sense. I was just thinking about it, you know, from the prospective client's point of view. is like, obviously seen something written down or seen a video because they're looking for proof as well right um but i just thought that like during this conversation right now i just realized that i can always use other people's testimonials as well like from other coaches and stuff like that and have that maybe posted on a landing page or uh the, the, the best content on it you don't need to have physical proof when you're just starting out although it is nice but the best proof when you're just starting out is your own story your own experience your own transformation um, okay yeah and if you don't if you don't have that yourself like in a lot of you guys are helping people with weight loss but you've never lost weight yourself um yeah then you could use someone else's story then you could talk about melissa raw food romance how she lost 70 pounds eating the same diet that you help people get on now right so you can you can use other people's stories uh, as long as they have followed the same process that you help somebody go through. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Thank you, man. Yeah. Cheers. Uh,
the stoic teacher got a question hey man um you can call me sam by the way uh thank, thanks for taking my question bro can you hear me properly i can hear you yes wonderful um so basically since i've joined contentpreneurs i've been following um the session you did on uh building a community without selling um i've been following i've been going back through the video and like playing it by minute by minute increment and following the playbook on the um funnels so the content kind of the dm me the word stoic for my guide on um how I lost 140 pounds of weight using the philosophy of stoicism. So that's kind of my story. I'm currently selling the story. Is that true? Now, 140 pounds? Yeah, yeah, I used to weigh like near 400 pounds. So, um, well, like three, three, like 60 at my most. So um, that's, yeah, that's my story. And um, I'm trying to play on my kind of unfair advantages because like, I'm a Cambridge philosophy graduate as well. So there's the whole philosophy angle and stoicism was the thing. Thank you, Haley, for the encouragement. Um, so I, I've got this, already got this kind of Skillshare class online with my friend, but um, I want to kind of build some coaching clients. And so I kind of uh, put together a list of the things that I've put in place in case you wanted to obviously see. I know you obviously don't have that much time, but um, there's a funnel page that I've got. Um, so on Instagram, I'll put my transformation and then DM me the word stoic for my free PDF guide on 10 ways stoicism can help you lose over a hundred pounds um, and keep it off. And so, um, and then they will, the funnel page leads them to stoicweightloss.com is the, is the domain, though currently it's not working, which I'll get sorted. Um, they click on it, they put their email and name, and then it sends them an email with the link to the Facebook Free community where the it's saved as a file um and from that you know i've got my first client and i'm having my third free session with him this week but i've like really tried to over deliver like you were saying so i've done like a daily schedule for him we've talked through calories protein this that i think i'm pretty like i'd say i'm 80 percent sure he's going to convert to like a, a paying client um I'm just like struggling with pricing and kind of you were talking about imposter syndrome um, and things of that nature. But basically, I just wanted to check if I'm doing the right things and and if you have any advice. No, I think it. Uh, well, have you gone through the 27 P's? Yeah, so I, I got through the first five, but like I'm quite slow with them because I click on every link that you reference for each one. So like on Passion, I watch like every single video and then I spend time journaling. So I'm getting through them at a very like snail's pace, but I will get through them all. Yeah, what I'd recommend is actually go through them very quickly your first run, like try and set the timer for like two hours max and get them all done. And then go through them again later and improve them all. But once okay. you once you've gone through them all very, very quickly, you at least now have a full lay of the land. And you can see everything, although it may be kind of fuzzy, but at least you see everything. Then you can refine it piece by piece by piece, click on every single link. Uh, but overall, dude, you have an amazing offer. And I've I've always wanted to help obese people because to me it's like, wow, what a what an epic transformation it would be. And the more weight you have, the more I think the easier it is to lose if you're willing, you know. So you helping people lose over a hundred pounds, you know what's cool about that is that says the niche without saying the niche. You know, like who yeah, and, and, and it, it's obese people, but you don't even need to say the word obese. Yeah, like it slims down when you add the stoic part as well. I guess that's my like micro niche. Well, this know? is this right here is is um, this is a tip for you. A big tip for everybody. Nobody actually cares about your process until they're sold on you and the result. So if I was to say I help people lose 100 pounds using a vegan diet, I'd probably actually scare away a lot of people. I'd probably get less clients than if I said I help middle-aged men lose 100 pounds, period. Mm. Once they're down, once they're interested, then I'm like, okay, bro, so the first thing I want you to do is have a smoothie in the morning. Second thing, I want you to have a big fruit bowl. And then for dinner, I want you to have um, another one of those smoothies except we're going to add some hemp seeds or something in it, you know? 
the guy can drop the label. And then as once they get some results, they're like, cool. So like, yeah, what you're doing right now, by the way, is called veganism, you know? Mm. Like it's 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 like the label you can give afterwards. So um if you are gonna if you do want to use like um a use like a method, use a method where there's no or where there's very little what's the word like judgment like people people i don't know how hard people judge stoicism um yeah not that not that hard everyone seems to be jumping on the wave at the moment so well well then if if it's if it's not something that might turn someone off then cool but you could use something called like the um the something method or like um i call yeah i have like the three four five method for it where there's like three stoic authors for like key ideas and then like five concrete techniques that is um one of the things that i suggest yeah i mean you i mean it sounds like you're getting people interested right now so i don't know if i'd even change anything just yet but don't 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 push the stoicism stuff too hard when you could be pushing the 100 pound transformation harder okay because people are more interested in losing 100 pounds than they are interested in, in the stoicism Mm. Yeah, I just thought it. I, I guess I was trying to lean into my unfair advantage in the sense of like an ultra niche, I guess, because there's loads of people selling transformations, right? So I was thinking, like, how can I stand out? Well, I don't know many people targeting the hundred pound crew. Mm, nice. That alone is already like you stand out. Like if if I know someone who has a hundred pounds to lose, who am I going to send them to? You. Because who mm. else is targeting people who need to lose 100 pounds? Most people are like, oh, I help you, you know, get a beach body. I'll help you get a bikini body. I'll help you get a flat stomach. You know, like that's what most people target. So you already stand out by saying, I help people lose 100 pounds. You might want to think about picking a gender. That would even help you more. I help men lose 100 pounds. I help women lose 100 pounds. Yeah, I think men, like my audience is like 70% male, like looking at the stats and largely like quite a lot of American, Americans are the largest contingent. Cool. I help men lose 100 pounds. They want to know how? Stoicism. Mm, yeah, because obviously all my all my content, as you can probably tell from the name, is like heavily <laughs> based on stoicism. Here, watch this. You liked my workshop, you said. Well, at least you went through it, so it attracted you. That said, how to hit five k a month without selling. So I stated mm-hmm. the without. I didn't even tell you how. So you can think about I help men lose a hundred pounds without blank, and mm-hmm. that's so much more attractive. So, for example, I help men lose a hundred pounds without calorie restricting, or I help men lose a hundred pounds without cardio, without exercise. Pick a without. Right. Okay. Pick a without. One of the most, I was just in a mastermind. I paid like 20 grand to be in this mastermind. And one of the top members or students, clients in the mastermind, he was doing like 100K a month consecutively, consistently, organically with no ads. And all he would market was the without. He's like, I help this. I forget what it was. I help this niche do this thing without this, 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 and this. There's a big list of the withouts. And people were just signing up like crazy because they hated those things. So he come up with a list of things people hate doing but think that they need to do but really don't need to do. That's a very powerful list. Mm, interesting. That's giving me a lot of food for thought. I need to think of the without. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you, you you don't need to uh, think of the perfect without just now. Think of something. So like I said, mm. without calorie restriction, I don't know if that's a thing that you do, or without exercise or without supplements or without, you know, just come up with mm. some, some list of withouts and then you can improve them later. Okay. Without nice. dieting, without dieting, you know, without whatever. Mm. yeah because moderation is one of my key things so i guess like stuff to do with like being really overly restrictive like without res- without restriction without, without, without restrictions yeah that's the mm. that's, that's one that, that i see a lot of fruitarians use is because when you eat a fruit diet you can eat like unlimited fruit you're never gonna get fat so they say like without 
without restricting the amount of food you eat. Mm, living at the gym is a good suggestion as well the, in the comments because um, that speaks to moderation as well. Nice. Thank you. Without getting your 10,000 steps in. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. thank you. Cool, man. Yeah, I think that's a very powerful thing right there. You honed in on the gender and if you hone in on the withouts, you, again, don't need to mention stoicism until they're listening, until you've got their full attention. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Never said, I never said how to make 5K a month using free trials. That'd be kind of weird and maybe unattractive to you. But I said how to make 5K without selling. And you're like, oh, how do I do that? I'm like, well, there's this thing. It's called a free trial. You're like, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I guess because stoicism is my in with the content, I I I don't see like a a way in without <laughs> referencing it at the moment. Obviously, in that first level, the way, of in, the way in can be the weight loss, a hundred pound weight loss. The way in can be, you know, disease prevention, disease reversal, and longevity, and all these like end results people want, not the process. Mm, maybe making more generalist content. If you. If you Here's the issue with going process first, right? Here's the issue with being stoic, stoicism first. You're now relying on people already being sold on stoicism. And far less people care about stoicism than they do about losing 100 pounds. Mm. You're, 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 you're limiting yourself too early in the pipeline, too early in the funnel. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Nice. Thank you, bro. I really yeah. appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. Love it. Thanks, man. Cheers. Uh, several withouts are better than one. Well, it's quality over quantity for sure. If I find out what you really don't want, Eugene, let's say let's say you're having marital issues and you're you're on the brink of divorce, and you really you really know that you need therapy, like counseling, ther marriage therapy, whatever you call it, marriage counseling. But that's just, I'm just making this up on the fly. But let's say you you really don't want to confess some secrets that you have, right? But you know you need therapy. But you're afraid that if you go to therapy, you have to confess in front of your wife, in front of the therapist, and you really don't want to go there. Like maybe, maybe, maybe you got like some traumatic experience that you don't want to bring it up. If if you heard this from a therapist said, like, hey, I'll help your marriage go back to the honeymoon phase without you needing to confess any deep down dark secrets, you'd be like, let's go, I'm in. Right? Because that's exactly the thing that you didn't want to do. And now they're saying you don't need to do it. No, I actually I'm coming from a coaching uh, therapy background. This is my business, basically, uh, psychotherapy and such. And I actually have several methods, uh, therapeutic methods, where I don't actually need to know the content of the issue of the client. Um, and I actually sell that as when I sell my courses, I, I sell that as a selling point. You can use this method with these clients with PTSD, for instance, or depression. Or phobia without actually even knowing what their problem is you can just use the method without knowing the content um and i use it as a selling proposition to you know promote the course cool yeah but the 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 key takeaway i want you to have is that like you just need one really good without you don't need a list you just need one really really good one yeah got it got it uh dean uh Yes. Speed run. All right. There we go. <laughs> I'm just My phone is the opposite way. So it's like, um, hey, everybody. Um, I just finished the speed run like last night. And it would be easy if I like share the screen. Well, tell me that. Tell oh, me. Uh, just tell me what the speed run is. Oh, <laughs> well, the speed run was uh, outline. So um, oh, 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 when sorry, I, sorry, 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 the sorry, speed run sorry. challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I, I was confusing it with the quick start challenge. Do you know what a quick start challenge is? I, is that the beta client cha challenge? 
That's yeah. That's okay. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. That, that that's my quick start challenge. So my quick start challenge, okay. you guys, is go get a beta client. Right. So okay. I th so I, th I thought, but they're kind of like intertwined anyway, because you you underneath the the quick start challenge. I mean, the the speed challenge is to go get a beta client at the end. Yeah. So what <laughs> what is your speed run challenge? You can share your screen. Okay. Let's say how you go. Um, share screen. Okay, here we go. So I think I got it open right here. I've never um, seen someone share their screen before on the phone. This is interesting. Okay, I'm going to like flip it though, because it looks stupid. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... I, I had like three different thoughts of how, what I help people. So you said, how do you help people choose a category? So I chose a help with health and wellness, um, losing belly fat and bloat and shrinking their waist. So I said, I help women lose belly fat and bloat and lose three inches around their waist in 14 days. Or I help women blast belly fat and bloat and shrink their waist in 14 days. And I like what you just said. So I said, without excessive exercise or without exercise. I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. But I just wrote that down, like literally. But um, and <laughs> so um, the main phase. And now, uh, is there anything you want to say, or just keep going? No, there's. I mean, we can always dive deep. So scroll up. Okay. A bit. Okay. Um, why do you have that first sentence at the very top? Why is that there? Well, uh, first you wrote uh, choose a category, so I was kind of just like reiterating that. So it was like I, I see. So just yeah, it, okay. Yeah, so it was like if you would like separate it like that, it's like I help women. Well, I help what what you said. I help with a category in health and wellness. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. chose that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. which is there for mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, my favorite of these is I have women's like that, but this is really that. For some reason, I like the um, I help women blast belly fat and blow uh -huh. their waist in 14 days. Okay. Um, yeah. I wouldn't, but here's the thing about the without. Uh -huh. you, said, you, said, you said excessive exercise. I'll tell you why I don't like that. Is because mm -hmm. The word of excessive is subjective. Right, 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 right. So what's excessive to me is not excessive to someone else, you know? So I'd say yeah. something else is much more clear cut. Like, uh, for example without for example without restricting calories mm -hmm, yeah um but the whole without thing you can brainstorm on that for a while yeah i like i, I, I like that because that's i would think like it's staying without something like makes me want to do something more like what well, i don't have to work out that much and i can have the small waist. I only thought I could do it by doing ab exercises. You know, like that. Well, the more the crazier, the crazier, and the more unrealistic it sounds, the better. So, mm -hmm. for example, I heard on the radio a while ago, and this is where I got this idea from, by the way. The without, I was on the radio one day. I never listened to the radio, but for some reason, I listened to the radio one day, and they said, um, they said something like, "Okay, and make sure to stay tuned within the next ten minutes because we're going to have an expert on the show, and they're going to show you." how to uh, save ten thousand dollars even if you have no money I'm like, mm. what how do you save ten thousand dollars? it makes sense you know but i yeah. was very intrigued how do you do it right so th that's why you want to create something very intriguing so again the example i used was recently how to make 5k a month without selling anything to most mm -hmm. people like, what how is that even possible yeah, I was going to take it a step further, but I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. I was going to say how to make 5k a month without selling anything or being on social media. Mm -hmm. That would be insane, right? Yeah. Or I could take it a step further and say what Bobby said, which is like how to make 5k a month without selling anything or being on social media or ever showing your face. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what? How is that? Like, I think it seems impossible. So try to come up with something that sounds impossible, but then somehow pull it off. I like that. Okay. So, for example, like I help them blast the without changing their without changing your habits, or mm -hmm. with you know, again, this is like what is the thing that they really don't want to do but think they need to do, right? And then just put that there. Okay. Most, I mean, off the top of my head, most most women think that they need to like calorie restrict and be hungry. You know, most no, no, mm -hmm. starve. 
Yeah. Without, <laughs> without, ever, without ever experiencing without, hunger. Yes. Like that's, because everyone thinks they got to be hungry. Yeah. If, so <laughs> without, without ever experiencing hunger. Right. Boom. Yeah. Without ever experiencing hunger or cravings. Yeah. Hmm. something like that yeah so i just i'm thinking about some pain points that women don't don't want they don't want to be hungry or they think that they just have to be in the gym two hours so there's a lot of busy girl like you know busy girl stuff so that's another thing like without having you know it's they think it's time consuming so time it's always time to time hunger and oh and weight loss so you everyone can- thinks mm-hmm you could say without going to the gym or experiencing hunger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without the gym. gym. Yeah, that's a big one, too. I'm just going to write down all those ideas. The gym, yeah. I like that. Boom. Yeah, they all think they need to go to the gym. They all think they need to be hungry. Yeah. They don't want either. <laughs> right. So, so uh, um, yeah, another one. Part, another, another mm-hmm. one is without the gym or cutting out your favorite foods oh okay well then this is a that's a whole different plan then we gotta i gotta write no because no no okay. because you can, can then convince them that their favorite foods is actually fruits and vegetables right 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 because we get there in phase three because, anyway because, because, okay because at the start you could define a favorite food as a mm-hmm. food that you love and it also loves you back and then by that right. definition, the only food that fits that definition is fruits and vegetables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So right. those are some ideas. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then uh, I was thinking, well, I, then you said just to break it up into the different phases, three different phases for the outline. Mm-hmm. So the first phase is always is going to be the elimination phase. So. Um, that's going to include a detox, it's going to include, you know, clearing the lower GI, then clearing the upper GI, sauna, bath, steam rooms, um, ec- uh, simple exercise to, to eliminate toxins and drink waste, and um, an environmental cleanse, which would be home, mind, people. This so is, was... this, this, this part's all, I don't know how much I could help you with this part, because you know this better than I do, but this part is, oh, like, okay, yeah. this part is mm-hmm. like, be creative, do whatever you want here, and just always. Oh, okay, up okay. Always. All up right. There. So this is this is the part that doesn't. Okay, I wasn't sure about that when we went when you did the video. Like I didn't know if it has to be clear, simple, because this would be the bait. This would be the outline I would use for my beta client. Correct. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. It just needs right. to flow. It needs to go from one point to the next very very smoothly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Then I got that down. And yeah, I just did the phase. But I think the hardest part for me was. Like how you ask me, like, well, what do you do? What what is this plan about? What is this program about? And I can say I help women black belly fat drink mm-hmm. their weights in fourteen days. Like I wanted to know if that was clear enough, like cool. to the point. Yeah, I would come up with however you. I'd come up with a, I'd open up another document here and I'd write down like one or two actions I'd want them to take every single day for fourteen days. Like, what's the fourteen day plan? Right. They can do day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. What are they gonna do on each every day? Right. Yeah. Okay. Schedule it so out. Fourteen brown. Okay. And you All know. right. Oh, sounds good. Cool. Right. It's kind of fun because I said I had that too because like that was like the life after that they would do a fourteen day plan, so that would be good. It says you know. But um, all right, I'll definitely do that. Cool, good stuff. Right, thank that. you. All right, thank you. Some good stuff. Here we go. Sam, change your name on Zoom so that it says Sam, because I don't even know if that's your name. I think it is. Uh, but but um, regarding your pricing, where to price one on one coaching? I always recommend start low and go high. Like I always recommend starting at when you, if you're just starting out, start at a price where you feel like you're getting ripped off and the person's getting like an insane deal. And then the next time you price it, 
It's a bit more fair. And then you just go up and up and up from there. You should always be fair, obviously, but what you consider fair, your standards are going to go up and up and up and up, the better results you get for your clients. So if you're just starting out, the best result you may get for your client is like maybe you help some guy lose 14 pounds in 30 days or whatever. That's initially your kind of results you get. But as you become a better coach, you might get really, really good. And you can like, no, I can help this guy lose 30 pounds in 30 days. That's worth twice as much. So you might go from charging a thousand bucks to 2000 or more, you know, but just start out feeling like you're the one getting ripped off. You're giving them a crazy deal. And then up it with each client that you get. Thank, thank you, bro. Yeah, cheers. Um, and Leah, if you have to ask, it probably is too vague. You want like, look what we did. We went from creators to musicians, right? We we made that switch from creators to musicians because musicians is not vague. In fact, you could even be more specific than musicians. You could say, I help violinists, you know, or I help rappers. There's so many rappers out there that would love to get more streams on Spotify. So, yeah. And by the way, a good, a good, um, we talked about using, right? With the, the method. An easy one nowadays is to say, I help musicians get more streams on Spotify using AI. You know, because that's very, very trendy right now. But, yeah, it 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 should uh, definitely not be too, too general like health professionals. Heron Ramsey. Oh, Karen, you had a question way up there about genius CRM, right? Yes, um, because I have it, um, but I haven't really seen it to be effective. So you as a, are you an appointment setter, Karen? Yes, I mean, in terms of giving a Calendly link and having people sign up for an appointment. Yeah, so you're the appointment setter in your business? Yes. I think that's an issue. Because an, a good appointment setter should be said right. a good appointment center should be having 40 conversations a day are you having 40 conversations a day probably not that many maybe half 20 okay so if my appointment center was having 20 conversations a day i'd fire them it's unacceptable so the reason you find genius crm potentially not so effective is because you're only running like 20 conversations through it per day and it's just another step that you have to take. It's a pain in the arse. But if an appointment center is doing, that's all they're doing. Is all they have to do each day is talk to 40 people. They can't do it without Genius CRM. Genius CRM becomes their, their compass. Yeah, if we got rid of Genius, we'd be screwed. It, it, categorizes, every, it categorizes our whole pipeline. And I go back a lot to the people who are in there um, and, you know, like I said, I'm doing really well with bringing people into my high ticket programs, but I'm looking to uh, do more with my membership, which hasn't increased. So, you know, there's a lot of women who are looking for lower ticket. And, you know, so I'm trying to the message best, people. The best method I've found, mm -hmm. I've tested a whole bunch of different things for growing a membership. The most recent one I've tested worked the best. And I've tested it a few times, so I know it's not just a fluke, but it's it's promoting a really attractive workshop to your people and saying, hey, guys, this workshop is 50 bucks to attend live. Or it's free if you grab a seven day free trial. And if you're already a member, it's completely free. Otherwise, it's 50 bucks. You'll get so many free trials from that. Some people actually do pay the 50 bucks. I made a few sales actually, which surprised me, but we got so many free trial signups from that. And so 
you only need to do that once a month, Karen. If you do that once a month, you'll see like an uptick, like 10 to 15 members every month. And if you do that every month for 12 months, you get, you know, 100 plus clients a month, and sorry, a year in your membership. You're charging 50 bucks a month, year one, five grand a month, year two, now you're at 10 grand a month, year three, 15 grand a month. And all you got to do is- Like the workshop that I would have done in that platform, offer it to others for $50 or the seven day trial. Yeah. So what I'm going to do going forward is inside of contentpreneurs, I'm going to do just like, I'll probably do a regular Q and A like I'm doing today, once every two weeks. And then two weeks later, I'll do like a themed workshop for you guys. Very specific theme. And that workshop you guys will get for free because you're entrepreneurs, but other people can pay 50 bucks for it or they can get in on a free trial. So it's just once a month, I do a little promo. Boom. Mm -hmm. Huge uptick in free trials. So it's very, it's a very simple approach on growing a membership. It's not the fastest, but it's like very low effort and it's almost guaranteed to see spikes of mm -hmm. trials. Right. And are there specific health topics that create more attraction for that do you think like for example this week i'm doing a talk inside my group on malabsorption i don't know if something like that would be you as see, attractive see, this is this is this is understanding copy and marketing 101 and sales and it's understanding that 99 percent of the people on the planet don't even know what malabsorption is they don't right. know what the thing and if they do the thing they don't know what it actually is right so in, inside my program, I ask women what their questions are. And some of the women were interested in that topic. They're already sold. They're already sold. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you want to think like, what do 99% of the people actually want? Not what do 99% of the people don't even know about. So I would not try and sell a workshop on malabsorption. Okay. <laughs> Although what you can do is this is very clever now. Now you take something most people don't know about, which is malabsorption, right? You take something that they really want, which is, let's say, for example, ease of conversation here, a flat stomach. And you say, hey, the reason you don't have a flat stomach is because of this thing called malabsorption. This is causing you to eat more calories than you really need. And it's all ending up in bloat and a big stump, blah, 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 all because you haven't dealt with this malabsorption. So you take this thing that they don't know about and you introduce it as the cause of the problem that's preventing them from achieving the thing they really want, which is a nice, sexy body in this example. Yeah, that's a great way to go about it. I like that. That, that is the way to go about it. Mm -hmm. It comes across as super freaking helpful too. Because they're like, wow, I didn't even know malabsorption was a thing. And it turns out it's the root cause of my problem. It's preventing me from getting the thing I really want. Thank you so much, Karen. You're amazing. I love you. Instead of saying, pay me $50, I'll tell you what malabsorption is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, thank you. That's really a good way to go about it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then you said, uh, you had another post in here. You said some of my posts I put in the Facebook group don't get out there and has zero reach. Um, yeah, and I'm putting questions. Um, I do have a lot of engagement on my Facebook lives. Um, and I DM people who are involved. Um, but that's not really the way I'm getting people into my into my groups. So... Um, Facebook and sometimes Facebook, it seems like it says zero reach on a post for quite a while, even though it's a question that I think would get a lot of response. I'm wondering why it says zero reach. Yeah, it can do that for me too sometimes. And then I refresh it and it actually is not zero reach. Okay. But what we do is I'll make a post and if it doesn't perform well, I just delete it. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, I just pay attention to what's working. So what you see that's remaining here is the stuff that's worked. Everything else I just delete. So I'm, I look through here and it's like, oh, if there's something that's like not landing, then I'll delete it. Um, and what's you... the benefit of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Karen? Do you still welcome people? Like I send out welcome to the group. I'm wondering if I should stop doing that. Can you make a post about it? I make an actual post. I wouldn't when... do that. It's like no. actually like it's like spam. If you anything, get your VA to tag them in this post here in the welcome post. And you could do this. We 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 stopped doing it, but we could probably start again. But you might as well get a VA to do it. Okay, so don't send out separate posts for that. No. No. Well, okay. How is that valuable to anybody in the community? It's not. Right. Okay. But then they land and, in the community and all they see these big welcome posts. Right. Instead, they land on my community and they're like, oh, this is helpful. Oh, this is helpful. Oh, this is helpful. This is cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And when, what you said about the appointer, the person who makes appointments and does DMs, What's your suggestion on where to get somebody like that from Upwork? There are a couple ways you can go about doing it. There are three ways you can do it. Number one, you could reach out to your list, your audience, your membership, and ask someone if they want to work with you on your team. That's one option. Go internally. Like some of the best hires I've ever made have been from within the team or within the, within my client list. That's option number one. Option number two is, yeah, you go on upwork.com and then you'd hire some random person and you train them. And then option number three is you hire from an agency where they already have a bunch of trained appointment setters who are looking for jobs, looking for placements. And you can pay them purely on commission. The only catch with that, and by the way, I've gone that route before and it's been very profitable for us. So we got our best appointment setter. The nice thing about an agency is although you do pay a lot, you pay a lot for the setter, you typically pay them in um, based off the sales you make. So let's say you go to an agency and you're like, hey, I want one of your setters. Like, cool, our setter is five grand. But you'll pay us the five grand in increments from the first 10% of every sale you make for the next five grand. So if you make basically 50 grand, then you're fully paid off. But if you're going to work with an agency like that and they're going to give you someone who's really, really good and you only have to pay them 10%, you have to qualify. And they're going to qualify you and they're going to be like, hey, are you getting, are you able to generate at least 40 conversations a day? Mm, the 40 conversations. Mm -hmm. If you can't generate 40 conversations a day, we're not going to give you one of our setters. And you have a high ticket program where you can guarantee generate, you know, 10 to 20K a month. If you can't, then we're not going to give you one of our setters. So you have to qualify. So you can go any one of those three routes. But you definitely want someone full time on the appointment setting. Okay. And I have to train them what to say, except yeah. for, um, I yeah, guess. But we have a very simple DM framework that crushes it. Like Krista just made a post yesterday saying how she just copy pasted it, used it and already landed her first, uh, call with it. See it here. Yeah. You've seen our, um, framework, right? Mm-hmm. Right here, simple and profound system. She's talking about the framework that we have. So, boom. It's not hard to train someone. It's just it's just you need to make sure that they really want it and that they, they enjoy doing it. Yes. I think I like the idea actually of sending it out to my list. Higher, higher within, yeah. Because some of those people love my work and- yeah. 
that sounds like a good way to go about getting somebody. Very good. But before you send the list, though, you should try and rack your brain, go through your like list in your head or on your phone. And be like, who do I think I could pick? And if you can't like manually pick somebody who'd be good, then sure, broadcast it. Mm -hmm. So maybe think about who I might want and ask some people first before even putting it out there. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. great. Amy, you got to turn the heat up. Crank that heat. Thermostat, right? There. Mm -hmm. Ted, should I go back and delete the welcome posts that I've done? Yeah, okay. Yeah, keep your room tidy, Karen. Yeah, okay. Good advice, thank you. Well, you're welcome. All right. If you guys have any other questions, ask away. Eugene, yeah. All right. So um, what's the criteria for deleting the Facebook post? Are you deleting Facebook posts from your feed, personal feed, or in the Facebook group? And why? Um, I'm Yeah, delete posts in the group that aren't performing well. Like if there's no engagement, no interaction on them then they didn't land, they didn't do their job. And I don't want people coming in the group seeing a post from two weeks ago and has no engagement, it doesn't look good. If someone, when someone lands in our group, so, now, all they see is engaged posts. And so it creates like a culture of engagement, right? When you see that, you're like, oh, I should mm -hmm. next time I see a post because this is an active group. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like, what's the criteria? Like how long do you keep it before you decide it stays on or it goes yeah, off? Yeah. My rule of thumb is generally if it doesn't get more than a couple comments within 24 hours, it's toast. Gotcha. Yeah. In fact, I'll delete one right in front of you guys right now. Um, I, had, I, had some, I, had, I had some attachment to it, but oh, three comments. It kind of, it kind of passed, but still want to delete it. Only three. Thanks, Bobby. Um, I had a very bad call to action on this post. It was a great post. But it was a very bad call to action. The call that you can learn from this call to action. Here's the call to action. First off, it's buried in here. And then the call to action is the only question I have is share release for free or charge for it. Like what a bad call to action. It's so bad. It's probably one of my worst ever. Um, and I've been doing this for years. So the rest of the post is good. Maybe I can like, in fact, I could probably repurpose it, repost it somewhere. But I'm just gonna delete it right in front of you guys just to show you I kill my I kill my babies. Delete. Bye bye. Done. No attachments. There you have it. Don't be afraid to kill your kill your darlings. Okie doke. Ted, can I ask you one more thing about the appointment setter? No. <laughs> um, just very quickly. So let's say I hire somebody I know or from my list. Could it be done the same way that if, um, you know, those DMs that turn into calls that turn into clients that I give them 10% or how do you do that? Yeah, you put your appointment set ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, Sam says, "My question. I crafted this based on what we discussed. What do you think? I help obese. I don't think you need to say obese men. It's kind of obvious. I'd say I help men lose over a hundred pounds without." Um, I also don't like saying without and then talking about money because you want them to spend money on you. So this would be like attracting the wrong kind of people. They're like, oh, I hate buying stuff. I'm going to work with Sam. Nice, dude. Now you got a bunch of obese men who don't want to spend money. Um, 
So I just say without cutting with the favorite foods. Done. Nice. I Thanks, help man. men lose a hundred pounds. I help men lose a hundred plus pounds. I'd say a hundred plus pounds. You could get rid of the word over without cutting out their favorite foods. Or cutting out is two words. You could say without eliminating their favorite foods or without restricting the favorite foods. Something like that. Yeah. Eliminating is kind of like a, like a clinical word. It's too, I don't like it. It's too like scientific. Uh, I have men lose 100 pounds without restricting the favorite foods. I, think I like restricting better. Cool. Uh, Leia, yeah, the, uh, tomorrow's the content call. So it's more focused on like your branding and your image and that sort of stuff. But you can post some of the P's, like the ones you have questions about inside the community anytime. Seven days a week. We're open seven days a week. Day nada. Also, announcement, if you guys haven't seen, I am going to be hosting a retreat. This is July, July 1st. You guys are all welcome to come. Actually, not all of you because only five allowed. Five of you are allowed to come because I only have that much room for sleeping. Unless you want to sleep in the tent and you can sleep outside. But uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to work in person and eat fruits and work out in front of a beautiful lake on July 1st. Bobby's going to run there. He's going to run 100 kilometers just to get there. <laughs> Is there, uh, are there two contentpreneur groups? It seems like one of them's kind of dead. One is free and one is paid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see which one you're talking about. It seems like you're not posting in one of them. Yeah, I don't post in one of them. I post okay. in this one. I post in this one a lot. You can see my face popping up there. But this one is is uh, it's the free one. I posted in there three days ago, six days ago, eight days ago. But I don't I don't I don't work with these people uh, in this group because they're not paying. You mean the Facebook group? No, the group I'm sharing on my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, this is just a free group. So these people get access to course material, but if they want access to myself and the team, then they upgrade to content entrepreneurs. Cool. All right, gang. See you inside school. Have a great Sunday. Thank you, Ted. You're very welcome, Karen. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, welcome. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Bye.